All right, welcome back to the O'Neill Coldwater Classic. This is your online coverage. Uh, you're joining myself, Omar Echeverry, with Adam Rapogo, former Coldwater Classic champion. We are diving into quarterfinal heat number two. Heats are just, they're going by quick now, Adam. They are, but they're still 30 minutes long. So we did see, um, you know, a beautiful heat. That last heat was incredibly cool to watch. And now you're seeing on your screen Taro Watanabe and Griffin Colapinto, so two extremely talented surfers uh, that surf exceptionally well on right point breaks. Yeah. This should be a banger of a heat. I'm noticing, too, the position of these two surfers in this heat have been out a little further. The, the tide has dropped, as you can see on your screen right there, so you're seeing the, uh, the ocean retreat a little, therefore allowing the waves to break outside. Uh, looks like the adjustment's been made. They probably saw a couple of waves that have potential outside. Um, but, yeah, this is a little different position than we saw the, uh, than Cole and, and Michael from that last heat. Definitely, and Griffin Colapinto yesterday in my book took it to sixth gear. <laughs> oh was yeah, that was nuts. I think he caught a wave that most surfers would have uh, thrown maybe a six or a seven, and he threw a nine one seven. Um, the thing was nuts. I think he did four or five just tail thrashers in a row super rad um but toro great surfer i know you know more about him than i do but um his style is insane totally i mean i i'm a obviously a big fan of just his style his technique and what he's doing with Gurr. but he just uh, produced a great little edit recently looks like he was uh, maybe near lakey peak or something but a great little um might have been on stab or something but it was a great edit and uh, really showed us uh, his ability in good waves. Yeah. And um, it, it was uh, exceptional surfing. Yeah, Gur was telling me he's been working with him for a while. And if you're working with uh, Brad Gerlach, the master, <laughs> it's pretty rad. Yeah. Um, that guy has a Ph.D. in surfing for sure. Um, yeah. And these heats, you know, uh, they feel long. Not a lot of waves ridden in most of these heats, though. Um, these guys are being ultra choosy, uh, trying to get the right waves. And when you start out, there's no priority. This is when it comes into the old school. You know what's rad, Adam? Mm. I noticed they all like are way up there in well, the beginning. Old no, school. Yeah, no, nobody wants to uh, relinquish the inside. You know, if there's no priority established yet. Um, but you, you'll watch some people completely surrender. So you'll, you'll see. We'll see. All right. Looks like we do have the winner of the last heat. It is Cole. Take it away. Cole, great surfing out there today. Um, that combo getting comboed was insane what was your strategy going into that heat did you have any things that you were thinking about um on a man on man heat you can kind of be more patient but uh there wasn't a lot of waves the heat before was flat so i thought maybe our heat would get some waves but it kind of there wasn't a lot of good waves in the set and uh he got me on the opening exchange but kind of lucked into a seven and then it worked out he paled and missed a wave and I just knew I had to pick the ne next best wave off him, and I got the eight and kind of put him on the spot with, like, five minutes left. So it kind of worked out perfectly. Um, not a whole lot of super crazy strategy. Just try to get on the best waves and surf. Seemed to work. Is there anything you've been doing lately to train? Um, we were all just talking about how you've been looking really good out there, really strong. What's your training regimen these days? Um, yeah, I work out almost every day, I train um, with all the boys at home, and nothing crazy. We're not, like, lifting weights or anything super heavy, but, uh, yeah, a lot of cardio training um, and just strength and stuff. I think I'm naturally big, so I kind of, like, put muscle on pretty easily, but, no, besides that, I'm just, I mean, I work hard. I train almost every day, so that's about it. <laughs> well, good work out there. Back to you guys. Wow, big boy. <laughs> That's epic. I love how focused surfers are now, too, on tour. It's so cool to see. Um, mm. Do I train? Yeah, I train every day. <laughs> that's epic. Um, yeah. yeah. That's, that's when am I going to make it on the CT? Stuff like that. Yeah. Love it. Well, you have to have, you have, to have first, uh, belief in yourself that you're able to do it. And then, uh, second, give yourself the opportunity. You see right there on your screen, already uh, four and a half minutes. You know, these are 30-minute heats, right? So five and a half minutes as he laps. We have yet to see a wave, and Cole was touching on it right there. Uh, it's relatively uh, inconsistent out there with the good waves. Plenty of waves coming through, but the good ones in the set are uh, few and far between. So the surfer's trying to pick the eyes out of it. They're talking about strategy a lot from the um, beach announcer. Uh, the strategy always is to be on the best waves. Definitely. Uh, speaking of best waves, this guy gets a lot of them. It's Griffin Colapinto from down in San Clemente. Uh, coming around this one, this one dies out a little bit, but I love how he kind of delays his bottom turns. You ever notice that? Well, he's very casual, and he's reading what? this wave exceptionally well. So 
it seems like he has a little more time than the average. He sees something down the line if he's able to get in the air. No, but that's that tail, a little ninja kick we've been talking about wow. that he has on lock. He does that turn a little below the wave. Here now, Taro Watanabe love his technique, and that is the maneuver that he's done twice in this event so far and hasn't pulled off. Now he pulls it off. Timing is right there uh, for Watanabe uh, to start really sticking the end maneuvers to really sort of make the judges you know, think about those scores that are going to get him through a heat because we've watched uh, Cola Pinto through this event. Uh, nearly every single wave he's taken off on has been uh, – you know, sort of in the highlight reel. Yeah, definitely. Boy, I love how t well timed that last wave uh, was from Red. We're going to dive into a couple replays here. Uh, first replay is Griffin Colapinto. And when I talk about delayed bottom turns, watch this. See? Just kind of goes all the way to the bottom and then up to the top. Yeah, even, Tons of speed. Yeah, even just those little uh, those little sort of hula pumps at the top of the wave to let the wave materialize before he went to the bottom. In this turn, I really want to try to get in my repertoire one day. Don't know if I'm loose enough, but that was a great little snap off the top. Decided not to hit it. But here's the wave uh, we missed out back for Taro Watanabe. Wow, great little release off the soup right there and direction change. So nice little variety. Really like how he gets his wingspan to open up too. He really draws that longer rail out. And here's the turn that I really like on the wave. Nice blasting tail, sort of pivoting around that front foot. So Watanabe starting off really nice right now. Judges looking at both those scores sort of in relation to each other. Uh, so we should have ourselves a great little heat. Yeah, a lot of times if you guys are seeing the replays, that means the judges are watching the replays. Mm -hmm. So still waiting for scores. And I totally agree. I love that front leg positioning of red. You know, just kicking out that tail, but leaving enough pressure on the front to you know, kind of pop you back up and release the tail at the same yep. time. Still waiting on scores. Looks like a couple bombs out the back. Looks like Red uh, will get first priority. Um, so he gets uh, pick of the litter out the back. Uh, he gets any set he wants, basically. Yep. Um, still waiting for scores. Yeah. Let's see if this wave materializes. Now with the uh, lower tide, we're going to start seeing a lot more waves grab the outside reef and maybe push a little wide excuse me, into some deep water. Um, usually that's what happens at lower tide. The wave will move out a little. We like that higher tide here or mid-high tide with this style swell at the lane. Moves waves into the cove here. Allows a little more water, a little more opportunity. Holds these waves up a little longer with a steeper phase. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I feel like, what's your favorite lane tide? Like three, three, five? Uh, you know, I'm, yeah, I, I like the lane. At, I mean, if it's big, I like the lane at any tide, really. I really yeah. like to surf the lane, but I really like to ride middle peak. And uh, and um, when it's bigger, it, you know, I, I prefer the high tide because it has less people and there's more consequences getting in and out. So it's really a deterrent for people to surf. True. Um, but look uh, at this wave right here. It looks like we have a little dig here. Looks like Cola Pinto might have gotten inside of Watanabe to give him something to think about. Uh, he's going to pretend like he wants it, and he does. So... Under priority, Griffin Colapinto sneaks this wave off of uh, Watanabe. Let's see if he's able to capitalize on it. Boom. Like beautiful, that. Beautiful, beautiful slash off the top into an epic roundhouse. What's he going to do here? Nice check fade, third, fourth turn, and boop. There's the karate chop you're talking about, kicking it out effortlessly. I mean, that's so hard to do, and he, it just looks like he's cruising. Well, he has perfect technique, perfect form. You know, let's see what Wantanabe really like this casual style as well. Let's see if he's able to get a couple of racks off, and he does. Okay, so Wantanabe again grabbing a nice little cutty as well. Didn't have the rebound uh, that Griffin did, but wow, that's a great little snap. Love the body English too as he comes to the inside. Great little direction change. So I really like the variety of maneuvers on this. Um, you know, in co the context of the heat, it's going to probably be – uh, right up there. He's already sitting on a 6.83, so Watanabe coming out on a quick start. I can't wait to see replays on that. I mean, that's tough. I oh, feel like cool. Red's wave was better. Um, he had maybe more combinations, uh, but Colapinto was uh, kind of like what I talk about in that sixth gear. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the judges definitely have their work cut out for him. They already dropped a couple scores. Looks like Red got that uh, 6.83, and first at Griffith Colapinto was the 5.17. Yeah. So, I mean, those two scores are pretty close. Yeah. So um, you're definitely going to have to check out the point of difference going into this, and Looks like Colapinto will get that first priority replay, Adam. Check yeah. it out. So here's uh, Colapinto's wave, staying back on it. You can see not a lot of wall out in front of him, but he stays back and is able to get a nice tail chuck right here. Watch the rebound, folks. Great little tag as he puts that nose back up at 1 o'clock. Nice projecting floater. And here's what he's eyeing up down the line, Omar. We talked about it all day. This guy uh, can 
spin like a pirouette around that foot and foot and not lose an ounce of speed. As you can see it from the aerial view, he stays back on that, folks, seeing right next to the white water, the powerful part of the wave. Really enjoy this wrap and that rebound. Uh, but Griffin called Pinto connecting the dots on the inside. Been coming up here since he's been about 10 years old. And that turn right there, uh, combined with the outside maneuvers, is sort of a, uh, a little point of difference in comparison to Watanabe here. Yeah, definitely. As you see Watanabe coming around that section, yeah, a great combination right there. I like this roundy, too, all the way back to the power source. Took his time, too, on this one. Wham. Slash. Beautiful cutty off the top. Nice roundhouse, and he gets one more. And I, it looks like it felt good to him, right? Oh, 100%. Like, I want... I'm going to find out exactly what model of Pizelli is riding, and I'm going to order one. Because that's, <laughs> I mean, and I, I've always, always talked about getting a, a, a new Mayhem watching Griffin surf. So, yeah, both these guys uh, doing an excellent job, looking extremely confident, and surfing really um, at the top level of their ability right now. And they're doing it together. This is a great, great heat right here. Definitely. And you know what that means when the replay's in? That means the judges are going to start typing in their scores. They just completely analyze those uh, two waves um, back to back that way they can keep it fresh in their minds and yeah. really compare them looks like scores are coming in Rody. yeah you know from from the early scores it looks potentially like uh taro potentially is going to get the uh, better hand a couple of scores a drop we'll wait till the the fifth score drops you throw out the high and low average the top three and it looks like Watanabe potentially is sort of getting the nod on both of these uh, first two waves you know, yeah, in my take, I feel like, you know, Griffith's waves maybe weren't as good, so he had to kind of more work Surf a little bit up. harder to manufacture them. Yeah, look at right oh, there. Wow. Griffin, 7.27, and uh, Watanabe on that last wave, a 7.5. Um, so he's got him on both exchanges so far. Yep. And now with uh, Griffin Colapinto knowing that in the back of his mind, he's got priority. He's got 17 minutes remaining. Um, we're, I, I expect fireworks. I haven't seen him surf under pressure yet, really. Uh, he's been able to come out and, and get great scores right away, sort of alleviate the back end of his heat. Uh, but right now he's been put uh, up to the challenge. Uh, Watanabe's doing a great job of challenging Griffin Colapinto here in this quarterfinal heat number two. No, I love the tempo that Watanabe had on that uh, last wave. Um, just played it super smooth and uh, tread it all the way to the inside. Looks like the pressure is now on Griffin Colapinto because he also has priority. So, I mean, that's a stressful situation. You need a score, and you have to choose the right wave. I don't know, um, if, I don't know if Griffin uh, stresses. I don't think he does. Huh? I do. I watch him. <laughs> I think he loses, and he's like, well, is there good waves up north? Like, You know, he, he's really sort of nonchalant, as you yeah. see up and riding. Let's see what he's able to do on this uh -oh. wave. Nice hack right there, Beautiful. Omar. So Griffin on a nice-looking little wave, bigger than his last two waves. Um, let's see if it has a wall on the inside if he's able to uh, make up some ground. Wow, beautiful cutty. Does it have the wall you need to get that all in it, uh, important inside turn? Looks like it just dies out. What's yeah. he looking for? He's looking for a 707. I don't know. That's going to be a tall order right there. Well, look, he could um, he could replace that 5.17 and actually need less of a score to move on, or less of a, uh, a wave to get into that advancing position. 50% uh, advancing in man-on-man -man heat, so there's only one person going to advance out of this. As you see, Watanabe left all alone out at the slot no pressure here let's see what he's able to do oh big turn off the top that was smooth i love his positioning he's wow. right in front of that uh backwash crack let's walk out of this one uh oh oh could be a missed opportunity right there oh, looks like he unfortunately went to he, had to go, he had to go to prone right there it almost was a massive score i don't know if you're going to be able to get away with uh doing that against griffin cola pinto uh, but that would have been a really really extremely um important wave had he pulled that off that would have uh, eclipsed his 6.83 um so you can see him kicking water he realizes probably that was a mistake not being able to pull that last re-entry off um, that was a beautiful combination too no, i'm sure insane. we're gonna dive into replay right here this is this the, is griff i believe his yeah. his early way i mean the last wave caught behind it for a little part of this section but still able to find some green face and this Omar, unfortunately, was all he was able to do on this way was sort of wrap up into the power section. I mean, I really know that that feels really good. Yeah. But the judges want to see a little more vertical face, and they want to see those tail wafts. He's been those yeah. ninja kicks out of the lip that he has. Is you can sort of see right there with his head going down. I could tell that he really wasn't 100 percent stoked on that wave. No, totally. As you see, uh, it um, and the wave wasn't that good. I mean, that's my first critique right there. If you're holding down priority, you better be getting the better of the exchange and this wave's kind of flat 
Well, had he capitalized <coughs> on the first part of that section, it looked like he was pulled back a little bit, might have entered the wave a little late. Um, so that sort of hindered the entry of that wave. The first section was missed. Um, but like I said, Griffin Cole and Pinto, nearly every single wave has been sort of a highlight reel. So this wave right here was crucial. Uh, beautiful blasting off the lip right here. Nice hack. And look at the English in his back leg right there. Really enjoyed that. Now here, all he had to do, all he had to do was right out of that. Unfortunately, oh. goes to prone right there. Doesn't even stand back up. But yeah, that's going to sort of sting. I know that's still going to be a pretty nice little score. Um, but it won't be exactly what he was looking for. No, definitely. And uh, both surfers catch waves. Um, but Griff, you know, he got the 593, but it doesn't matter. He's still going to be tr uh, looking for that 707. Uh, yeah, we got plenty of time left. Still 13 <coughs> minutes, 20 seconds remaining in this quarterfinal heat. Look at him now sitting right on each other. This <laughs> is going to be fun. This is <laughs> the way that I hope this, uh, uh, this heat would go, you know, wave for wave. Either I like the really nice... Uh, where guys are battling each other with good high scores. So you see a really close heat there. But I also really enjoy the heats that are in the twos and the fours. You know, how do you manage, um, uh, you know, your the pressure cooking environment when you need a really small score? Obviously, you got to surf out of your skin when you need a big one. Sometimes it's even harder uh, to get a small score. But right now, two minute, I mean, 12 minutes, 45 seconds remaining. Still a lot of time for Griffin Colapinto uh, to get that 7.07. .07. And he's been putting up eights and nines. Um, Expect to see Griffin on, on a heater here soon. You know, it was uh, nice to see this year um, as Griffith just barely didn't make the uh, WSL uh, finals. I saw quite a few interviews with him, and he looked really mad. I kind of like I like that in an athlete. Um, so I feel I feel that energy um, as he grows up. He's kind of looking at like this is my time. And he said that on one of his interviews, which I love. So, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully uh, he's saying that here. This is my cold water, right? <laughs> that mentality that we're talking about mm -hmm. that Cole and uh, some of the other surfers have. It's, it's I want to win. I'm, I'm not here to get second. <laughs> I'm here to take it. Well, I hope, that, I hope they get second to Sean Burns or Sam Coffey. There we go. Yeah, that's just me. <laughs> but look at right here. You're, you're <laughs> seeing some information being thrown out from the point right here. Guaranteed. Uh, usually, you know, we're, when we were competing a lot, there would be a guy out there throwing curveballs, you know, throwing some false information to people that you, you knew not to listen to. And um, so you also have the voice in your head, and then you have some influence from the outside. But look at these ample lines out the back. Uh, going to be plenty of opportunity here down to 11 minutes in this heat. Ooh, what's he going to do? Yeah, it looks like Colapinto utilizes his priority. Ton of speed He's coming around this. Boom, throws Ow. it out. Oof. Ouch, landing down the flats. Unfortunately for Griffin, he usually lands nose first like a pillow on that nose and then spins pirouettes around that front foot. But unfortunately for Griffin right there, not able to pull down that, that rotation. Yeah, definitely. As you know, that impact zone right there is so gnarly because you got it's just past Table Rock, but you have the side wedge and yeah. rocks and everywhere, Look side at, warbles. Look at the swell, Omar, still pumping in. I mean, I, on any ever given day, this is a great, you know, great day at the lane. Our first day at the land, I'd say, was an, an A day. Uh, then we had a couple B days. And now we're back to, a, you know, what potentially could be an A day here at Steamer Lane. Got all the uh, all the fixings in the world here to make a nice play to surf. Uh, let's just hope all the chemistry comes together. We get the tide. We get the wind. So that when we get into those semifinals and finals, we have the best surf of the whole week. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm curious what you think. Red now has priority. I mean, he has two solid scores. I'm thinking drop anchor, wait well, for a really good one. Oh, of course. That's that's the game. He's not going to take off on anything that's going to get him less than a seven. Um, so now, he, this is where a surfer like Griffin Colapinto can get you scared, though, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, me, me, people like him, that's the scary shark. Well, yeah, you get him roaming, and um, he's sort of freestyling around the environment and around the surf zone. As you can see, Sean Burns, local boy, getting ready for the next heat. He's also riding one of those sharp eyes as well, so a lot of local guys – uh, riding Marcio's boards this year, and I'd say a lot of Santa Cruz guys in general riding those boards. Yeah, definitely. Do you have one? I've had him for years. Yeah, I love to ride those boards. He's up against uh, Kolohe and Dino, so he's got his work cut out for him. Also the team rider for O'Neill, so a couple team riders coming in this next heat. But let's uh, sort of dissect this air that Griffin went for. Oh, wow. Tons of board speed, but look at the warble. There it is right there. Yep. He wants to hit that warble. That warble's so hard to hit. <laughs> yeah, but unfortunately, if you notice, he wasn't able to get his board into that rotation. It yeah. sort of was going to straight towards the beach. His tail wasn't straight toward the beach. So even though his rotation uh, was going in that direction, his board didn't follow. So unfortunately, 
uh, Griffin not able to pull down that, that rotation. To me, that would be sort of a point of difference as well in this heat. We're seeing traditional really good solid surfing sticking to the face of the wave. Obviously, to, uh, Watanabe's release on the tail, the last, uh, that one big score. Um, but right now, Griffin has an arsenal of aerials. I, I believe that he could pull out to really sort of open up the scale here. Uh, there's still some on the top end, obviously 7-5, highest scoring wave of the heat. Uh, but Griffin does have the ability to add uh, the power carves and the above the lip tricks that get into that excellent score. Yeah, definitely. I like where he's hitting too. That's kind of your pressure cooker spot, right? Uh, so you have Red holding on to priority. Griffin Colapinto only needs a 7-0-7. Um, so for him, that could just be one massive error. You never know. Um, time is winding down, though, 8 minutes and 23 seconds. And just like you said, this is the first time in this competition we've seen Griffin Colapinto in this situation where he's got to come from a, a non- advancing situation he's kind of led the heats from the get-go throughout this event so yeah pressure's on yeah and he surfs out here enough to know that there's opportunity all around the spot see this wave is looking a little warbly up off the off of the lane cliff here as you can see all that backwash uh, those waves are really challenging to surf if they don't uh, get in front of table rock uh, at this low of a tide sometimes you get shut down so it looks like the, the tide is sucking out omar the waves are grabbing a little more of the outside part of the reef Let's see if the guys adjust a little and move out to allow themselves the uh, the entry and the opportunity of that first section. Yeah, definitely. Like you said, you can kind of chip witch into those things. If you kick and scream, we've seen local surfers do that throughout the years. Looks like he's going to force the issue, too. So he wants Red to get this wave, uh, making him to utilize that priority. Wow, big snap, though. Looks like a good wave. Uh, wants Nobby. One, two, three, Whoa. punch. Might get another one. He's looking to better that score, Adam. What do you think? I don't want to talk until he's done. That was insane surfing right there. Really thought that was clutch surfing. And you can see right behind him, looks like we're going to have maybe a thunder stealer. Let's see what Griffin's able to do. And he throws up a little layback jam. Unfortunately, gets his board a little dirty. It looked like the rails uh, got a little dirty right there. Didn't really blast that tail out like he wanted to. Um, but we still have, what, seven minutes remaining. We have plenty of time left. But I really want to see a replay of Taro Watanabe's wave. I thought he surfed that wave excellently. I say that without saying that's an excellent score, um, but that wave was well ridden, and uh, oh, that, that's what I want to do. Got the paddle battle. Check that out. Yep. Boy, I don't know. That's going to be a close one on priority, too. Look at him go. It looks like we're still waiting on some scores. Might dive into a replay. Um, depends. Oh, looks like. Look at this, Adam. I love yep. it. Old school. Go, Old school. Go, kicking go. and scratching and fighting. I really enjoy this. Um, you know, this is also, yeah, that's a great view. Wow. Uh, this is job. also a line judge. There's a line judge looking at this as a priority judge that takes note on this. But you're going to see a really tight battle here for that priority position. Um, historically, they will give the uh, the surfer who had the, the last wave second priority the one, and so on. So we'll see what the uh, the priority judge uh, determines here. They look pretty pretty close to me. Wow, look at um, that. That's close, dude. I don't know. I, I feel like it's going Watch to someone grip. sit up on their board really quick and posture like, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Seriously. And throw their arm up and say, hey, I want a wave score. Wow. Dude, I would faint by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And that's why you're here and seeing a lot of these young surfers out there wearing three twos out there, Omar. Yeah. They're yeah, wearing three they're twos. They're overheating. Yeah. They're overheating, actually. Yep. You know, so you'll see in a big paddle here, they still haven't stopped yet. Oh, it looks like Griffin's got wow. the position, and he does. So he's able to get back into that priority position. Wow. Um, that was rad. That was. That was great stuff. Love it, dude. You know what's cool, too? I, I love um, a lot of these guys on tour, they kick while they paddle. Do you notice that? Of course. It's like they, they Well, it's you like know what? If you look at the planning of the board nowadays, yeah. the tail block is below uh, the water's level. So kicking gets you elevated your, t uh, your tail up. You see Grishin forced uh, Watanabe to take that wave. And look what he was able to do. Really nice layback, committed layback snap right in the pocket. Beautiful. That nice turn as well. Start really connecting to the lip here and wow. seamlessly jams it back up into the pocket. Um, Gurr was mentioning that he just wanted him to get out of his mind, just go naturally go out there and surf. And it looks like he's doing that. He's completely separated himself from his brain, and he's letting his body take over. Griffin prone takeoff comes to the inside. Nice hack. And then that, unfortunately, like I would mentioned, a little get caught up in the soup a little bit, but still a nice little turn nonetheless. Yeah, definitely. Wow, looks like Toro's wave comes in at it. 8.07, so wow. dude, that was big. That was massive. You see both of the surfers now just glued to each other. Four minutes, 20 seconds remaining. So we do have ourselves, look at these guys, nearly touching. Wow. 
It's not uncommon, folks, to have your fellow competitor right in your ear. But if you want to make a fast move to your right, you're going to bounce rails off them. Yeah, definitely. You but, know, you know. Look uh, it looks like they might even be having talking? a communication. I wouldn't be talking. No. No way. <laughs> Would Burkhart be talking? No uh, you way. know who Kelly would be talking. Oh, he'd be throwing you a curveball for <laughs> sure. But you know what? There's a lot of chatter on that cliff too. Uh, you you know you you're actually involved when you're on the cliff here and you're hearing scores. Uh, it, it's only natural to hoot and to yell and to get behind it. Uh, we uh, Santa Cruz surfers, Santa Cruz in general, love to see good surfing. So regardless of who it is, they love to see good surfing. Of course, we want to see a local person win. Wow! Uh, but right now, both Taro and Griffin are shredding. And so this is definitely steering the level up. Look what Griff needs, Adam. An 8.30. 8 That's a tall order. He's gotten plenty of waves throughout this event that have been above that. But so. look, he's a clutch surfer. He's world tour surfer. He's been in this position before. Uh, three minutes remaining. He has priority. There's been a lot of opportunities. So we're hopefully we'll see another five, you know, two sets here in the last minute, couple minutes. Um, but he is a clutch surfer. He's been known to, you know, Pull out some buzzer beaters. Check it out. You got two guys from two different SCs coming up. You're going to have Kaloe and Dino and Sean Burns. Nice. Sean Burns from the Santa Cruz SC and Kaloe and Dino, uh, Dino from San Clemente. Looks like we're, we're going to uh, dive into a couple uh, more replays right here. This is Taro's 807. Boom. Look at that action right there i love his bottom turn Boom. yeah i like that turn straight into that turn so sick and then riding that out that was clutch right there i really liked how seamless he went from transition off the bottom off the top and also forcing the issue right there griffin ensuring that he was going to go on that way make sure he gets that priority but right there double hand layback nice couple hula pumps to get out in front of this wave this is what i like one two ah. and and just great read right there um you know, years ago, uh, a lot of guys were counting maneuvers, so you're always trying to sneak in one, for, uh, two for ones, trying to get two maneuvers in where you need one. He did a great job of punctuating all those maneuvers in that way. Oh, the pressure's on. Colapinto holding down priority. One minute and 50 seconds remaining. Mm. Um, and, you know, just like you and I were talking about, these tour surfers, they know what the wave looks like to give them the score. Oh, I yeah. think that's a massive difference in these guys. They know. They're like, oh, look, I can get that. But look, uh, Griffin uh, has the ability um, to up-surf a bad wave. So, you know, obviously he gets a wave that you write, you say seven on it all day long. He has the, uh, the ability to push it up into the eights. So let's see what Griffin's doing here. He's totally committed on this. Might be his last wave of the heat. Wow, dropping in. Looks like kind of a smaller one. Nice snap off the top. He's looking for an 8-3-0. I just don't know. He's no. got to go massive he right He sees there. an end section. He's going to think rotation, I think, towards the end of this. I can't even see fully, but Griffin's going to have to do something different. And there he does. Wow. He might even need to do it again. He probably will try. Nice little release, that little ninja kick. There's a little support claim right there. Um Needs that 8.3. So they're going to be looking back at Taro Watanabe's wave. It was the best wave of the heat. And they're, they're going to be in comparison to that. So he's definitely trying to sell this wave right here. We'll dissect this one. So nice wrap. Relatively a smaller wave in comparison to Taro's wave. A little frothy as well. Um, just don't think he's got that vertical face and uh, those extreme maneuvers outside to get it. Now that was an exceptional maneuver. Tons of amplitude on that. And then coming into the inside Really like those sort of ninja kicks, selling yeah. it right there. But it's up to the judges now. 20 seconds remaining. Griffin's on the beach. I'm sure he'll be getting some uh, googly eyes over those young girls in there. I think my daughter has a crush on him, too. It's pretty, it's pretty classic. <laughs> That's epic. I know it's uh, one of my son's favorite surfers. So right still on. Look, on at, look, at, look at it. 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 Oh, look score, at. score's coming in. No, I just see Watanabe smashing water. He is so stoked and so pumped. Let's see what they give him. What do you give him, Omar? A 7.57, seven, just barely not enough. Did so. anyone go into the 8s? Yes, one of the judges did go up into the 8s. A um, couple of 7s, seven, 7.2, seven, average out to a 7.27. Yeah. So great surfing right there, Griffin of Colapinto, inspiring our whole town, inspiring the youth around the nation. Great heat. That was awesome. All right, we're going to throw you to a quick break. We'll be back with more quarterfinals action here at the Cold Water.